forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal, sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer of you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. 
But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
try that again. Lapel mic. <clears throat> there we go. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There are two things that motivate my ministry. One is my belief that the gospel of Jesus Christ is, was, and always will be of interest to people. Like those nameless Greeks in our gospel passage this morning, there will always be people who wish to see Jesus. There's an attraction, an almost gravitational pull to the person and the message that was unleashed in those early days in Judea and has continued throughout the years, throughout the world. And it is a person and a message that remains compelling to people today. In my understanding, the content of, the go of that gospel could be summarized as follows, that this world is laced with a reality beyond our immediate perceptions, and we have come to call that reality God. And the nature of that God is understood most fully in our human experience of love. We know this because of Jesus who was the full embodiment of that reality and showed us by what he did, what he taught, how he lived, and most importantly, how he died, that love expressed in service of others is holier than a life lived in power over others. And by his life and witness, Jesus proved that love is stronger than hate, that life is bigger than death, and that a human life best lived is lived as an agent of healing and wholeness, of justice and reconciliation, of forgiveness and mercy, of peace and joy, of generosity and humility. Therefore, 
These are to be the aims of those who seek to follow him. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have been given that ability, the ability to conform our lives more and more to this way of Jesus, and thus to the fullness of God. That is my understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I have experienced the power of Jesus to change and shape my own life. And therefore it is my great honor to try and share him with those who may find that they too wish to see Jesus. That is why I say it motivates my ministry. But the other thing that motivates my ministry is the fact that while there will always be people curious about who Jesus is and what he is about, much of what passes as Christian these days, much of what gets the name of Jesus or the image of the cross slapped onto it is the antithesis to that understanding of the gospel. So those who come seeking Jesus see an ideology that has produced followers who are divisive, judgmental, whose love and acceptance is conditional, who are increasingly aggressive and hateful, even violent, and who have in recent generations sought to align themselves with political powers in order to force other people to live by their idea of who God is and what he wants. This type of ideology has taken many forms and many names over the years, and currently the most troubling iteration of these ideas is what has been termed Christian nationalism. Christian nationalism is not patriotism, which is a love of your country and a respect for its foundational ideals. Nor is it the idea that your faith should influence how you vote. Of course it does. Rather, it is the idea that Christians should gain dominion and power over the entire country in the name of restoring it to its rightful ways. And they seek to live out that belief by any means necessary, by law, by vilification, by force. In attempting to make their view of Christianity rule the land, Christian nationalism violates the very First Amendment, which protects the freedom of religion for all people, and therefore it is anti-American. And given that it is often motivated by fear and anger rather than love and mercy, it is not just anti-American, it is to quote Bishop Matthew Hyde of New York, a heresy, and it is a sin. But currently, the cultural conversation around Christianity is focused almost exclusively on that kind of witness, and the results are damning. A little over a week ago, I spent a few days in Houston at a conference for the Episcopal Church, which drew people from across the country. And as happens, when you get a bunch of Episcopalians together, even from well-resourced and strong, healthy parishes, the topic of decline comes up. It was, of course, mentioned that there are strains of secularism that are pulling people away from the church, a trend I'm glad to be able to note we are bucking here at Christ and St. Luke's. Thanks be to God. But what also surfaced was that our biggest problem was not Sunday soccer games or brunch. It was, in fact, ourselves. Christians, those who claim the name of Jesus, have an image problem. More and more, people who come in curiosity and say, we wish to see Jesus. See what passes for Jesus' followers in the public sphere and say, no thank you. <coughs> but I, for one, am not willing to cede the name of Christian to those who would subjugate the truth of the gospel to their own quest for control. And I know many of you are right there with me. We need to reclaim the name. 
by embodying a different sort of witness. Right now, and for the past many years, those promoting a Christianity that creates division and hate in our country are beating us at getting their message out there, whooping us, in fact. Which means we need to be louder with our love. We need to be willing to claim the title of Christian as one who is open-armed and open-hearted, there to give of themselves for the betterment of others, ready first to listen and to learn, not just give all the answers, and willing to stand up for those whom no one will stand with, because that is what Jesus did and who Jesus is. As we move into Palm Sunday and Holy Week, we will have no shortage of evidence that Jesus explicitly refused to force his way into power to gain dominion over others. Instead, he is so committed to the way of love that he is willing to be unjustly condemned and brutally killed rather than assert or align himself with the political powers of that day. And that, I believe, is the reverent submission that Hebrews talks about, his resisting the urge to dominate people in a worldly way that unleashes the true power of God in the resurrection. In these upcoming liturgies, we will be reminded again and again that we are to love one another as he loved us in that same way take up our cross, not our crown, and follow him. This message appears even in our readings today. In this morning's Gospel from John, Jesus says, When I am lifted up from the earth, the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I will draw all people to myself. And when he says the ruler of this world, he is speaking about the devil. And as I've mentioned before, the word devil stems from the Greek word diabolos, which means the one who throws apart. Therefore, any work that seeks to divide and throw people apart is by definition diabolical. And that is what Jesus will drive out when he is lifted up. But when he says lifted up, he is not talking about his glorious ascension into heaven or his, even his miraculous resurrection. He's talking about being lifted up onto the cross. For he was speaking about the kind of death he was to die. That is the way that he completes his work here on earth, drawing people in, drawing people together into his heart of love, which is the heart of God. It is there on the cross that the open arms of Jesus seek to stretch so far as to encompass the entirety of the world in his embrace. It is there that we see most clearly the way to which he calls us and the depth with which he loves us. And it does not look at all like political power or dominion. That is the Jesus we need to be showing the world by loving the world and its inhabitants that much. And we need to work harder and smarter so that when someone says, I wish to see Jesus, they don't have to look so hard and so far to find a witness that says, this is what Jesus is about. This is the God I believe in. He is about love and service, and he welcomes you as you are, while always knowing that you could be better. And he came to bring healing and justice and peace, and therefore we, as his followers, try to do the same. So as we come to the end of our Lenten journey and turn our faces towards Jerusalem, as we walk through the central story of our faith with palms and basins and nails and candles, as we stand there, 
While Jesus suffers at the hands of those who compromise their religious tenets in order to align themselves with political power, let us remember in whose footsteps we are meant to be walking. And let us have courage to follow in faith where he has led the way, claiming his name and bearing his love to a world that longs to see it. Amen. Amen. Let us stand now and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 4 in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with your scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer today, we pray for the church in Wales. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Epiphany, Norfolk, and Good Shepherd, Norfolk. We pray for the Christ St. Luke's youth group, who today are worshiping at Chanko. And we pray for all those facing illness, surgery, injury, or adversity especially Bishop Michael Curry,
Greg Deutsch, Stephanie Harris, Sydney Kelsey, Frank Kirchner, Anne Lankford, Bill Mackery, Stephen Perry, Fred Quist, Jesse Schneider, Susan Schrote, and Rivers Thompson. We pray for the safety of those who are deployed, John Goulart, Michael Ortiz, and RJ Shirley. And we pray for the people of Ukraine and for peace in the Holy Land. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Hillary Burgess Kent. Let us pray. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Sunday of Lent. It is a joy to be able to welcome you in worship, a joy to have, uh, to have passed through our scaffold tide and be back in our worship spaces fully. So we are glad for that, that that work has gone well and quickly. So uh, we are very, we are ready for all that is to come. And all that is to come is Palm Sunday, Holy Week, Easter Sunday, all happening in the next couple of weeks. So if you want or need, the schedule of those services is in your bulletin. It's on our website. We've got a, a standing sign out front. We've got a hanging sign out front that has all these ways in which you can make sure to know when those services will be. So please do join us for them uh, beginning next week, as I said, with Palm Sunday, the 1015 service will uh, have the grand procession, the blessing of the palms will be coming through with incense and the waving of palms and all that. It should be a, a wonderful beginning to those holy days. Uh, if this is your first time with us, we offer you a special word of greeting. Uh, you might note in the pew in front of you a little visitor's card which has some information about our church and gives us the chance to learn some information about you if you're willing to share it. You can Take that and fill that out or use it to go online to our website and do the same electronically. Uh, and if you have that and want to give it to a member of the clergy or to A.J. Nolan, A.J. is up there as our vestry person of the day here to help greet you and welcome you as well. And we invite all of you to our coffee hour after the service, which is through those swinging double doors and to your left in our new parish hall. This week, Wednesday night, this is our last Lenten Supper. This has been a wonderful experience of fellowship and time together as a parish community. Uh, you don't need to bring anything, just yourselves and maybe a friend to come join us. We'll provide the food and we just spend some time together in community. So we invite you to join us for the last one of those this Wednesday at 6. And finally, Easter flowers. We are, going, uh, we are receiving donations for those who would like to help adorn our church with beautiful flowers on Easter Sunday. And you have the ability to make that donation in memory of or in thanksgiving for a certain individual or person that you care about. So please do note the little envelopes that may be in your bulletins or on the back table. Uh, or there's a way to do that online as well. So I think we have one more week that we will receive those until we have to go to print with our Easter bulletin. So please do make a point to bring them in, and please do, when you are filling out one of the physical envelopes, do your best to write legibly. That is very helpful to us. A happy St. Patrick's Day to those of you who are celebrating. It's wonderful to see the green sprinkled throughout the congregation. So please do, uh, do give someone uh, who is not wearing green a pinch to make sure that they uh, know that they've missed the boat on that. 
We continue with communion in just a moment. We are back up at the altar rail for the predominant place of reception. That means when the ushers release you from your pews, make your way straight down all the way up through the choir and fill, fill in from the middle to the wall, from the middle to the wall, inside to out, no matter which side you are on. Find the open space, move into it, and then kneel as you're able or stand if you need to. Uh, receive the bread with your palms up if you'd like to sip from one of the chalices. That means you should consume the bread, leaving your hands empty. If you'd like to dip it, please hold on to that wafer and the intinction chalice will find its way to you. When you have finished receiving, come on out and down the side aisles and back to your pews. If you need a gluten-free wafer, please do indicate that when you come forward. If the stairs are difficult for you or unsafe, we will have a standing station here uh, on the pulpit side. Just find your way over to this line and peel off to receive there. If you would like to come forward and not receive the sacrament, but simply receive a blessing, we invite you to do that by gently just crossing your arms across your chest. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our Eucharistic prayer can be found on page 5 in your bulletin. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that, fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love them. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Come subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the of God for the people of God, holy things for holy people.
post-communion prayer can be found on page 7 in your bulletins. Please stand. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.